Hey guys, Matt from Model Minutes here, and welcome back to the Workbench. Today I'm going to be doing a sort of challenge video, answering the question, can you build a starter set using only the included paints and cement? Well, let's see if we can't find out by building this Airfix 172nd scale Messerschmitt BF109E3 starter set. As you can see, indicated on the box, it comes with four paints, a tube of cement, and a paintbrush. The paint scheme on the back of the box doesn't look too complicated to do, but all the colours are sort of green and greys, so mixing them to get anything else is already off the cards. No deep blues, yellows or reds, unfortunately. So let's get this box open and see what we've got. I've already done an unboxing video on this particular kit, so for an in-depth look at all the parts, you can find that on my channel. As is typical with starter sets though, we've got an instruction leaflet, a small sheet of decals, two grey plastic sprues of parts, one clear one with a cockpit canopy on it, and then finally a bag containing the paints and cement. Oh, and don't forget the brush that was loose in the box. The brush is a number two thickness, so not too fine, but not too thick either. The quality looks to be okay, and I should be able to use it fairly well. The small tube of cement, however, is known for being quite difficult to use with thick cement inside. Let's see how much of a mess this one makes. The four pots of paint are the standard small ones that are included with starter sets from Airfix. Humbral paints get quite a bad press due to their reputation for being grainy and difficult to use, but as these are acrylic, they can be cleaned up with water, so I guess that's a positive. With the contents of the kit out of the way, let's talk about the rules of this challenge. So, firstly, I'm only allowed to use the paints, cement and brush that were included. No other decal solutions, varnishes, washes or paintbrushes for those large areas or finer details. What I've got is what I'm stuck with. Second, I have to use or include as many parts as possible. I can't take the easy way out. For example, I'm going to include the pilot and display the landing gear lowered as that uses more parts than displaying it raised. Third rule is that I'm allowed to use water to wash my paintbrush and to apply the decals, but not to thin the paints. The paints have to be applied straight from the pot. So yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm going to use this plastic pot as my water container, which was just something out of the recycling. Finally, rule four. I need to use something to remove the parts from the sprue. So to keep the number of tools down, I'm going to allow myself the use of one knife. This one to be exact. If you were a beginner, I'd like to think that you might have a knife similar to this for your kits. Also, you can use it to cut away flash, which is handy. But that does mean no cutters or sanding sticks. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, let's get on to the build. As always, please remember that adult supervision may be required when building model kits due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older. I begun by cutting the parts for the propeller assembly away from the sprue. I will do this throughout the entire build for every single part, and then carefully cut away any excess that might be left over. With that done, I tried to carefully place the cement on the back plate. This is why I'm not a fan of this cement. It's quite thick, and getting accurate control over the placement of this glue is virtually impossible. The retaining pin is pushed from the back, and then the propeller added to the front. The spinner can then be glued over the top. The pilot's seat was cemented into the cockpit component, then the control column was added. This next part has the rudder pedals moulded onto it, but as I'm including the pilot these had to be cut off as per the instructions. Finally, the control panel can be added. Make sure you check the instructions for placement of your parts, as this took me three goes to get it right. Humbrol 31 slate grey matte acrylic was painted onto the entire cockpit area as the internal colour. I would also use this later on the internal fuselage walls and the landing gear wheel wells. As I'm using the paint straight from the pot, only about two layers will be needed, but carefully brushing in opposite directions will hopefully try and minimise brush strokes. I've already painted the main body of the pilot with the same colour of paint, but the helmet, gloves and boots are going to be painted 33 matte black. But, oh dear, the paint that was included in the set has dried up. 
You could try and revive that with water, but from my experience when it's a hard block like this, it's pretty much dead. You'd be better off chucking that out and getting a new one. Fortunately, I have a spare from another starter set, but I can imagine the pain this would cause if you didn't have another one. I carefully picked out the correct areas on the pilot figure, but left his face in the grey plastic. Seeing as I don't have any suitable skin colours and can't mix anything to make one, this will have to do. Next, the propeller assembly was given a couple of coats of 33 matte black. I've cut the cockpit control panels from the decal sheet and will then soak it in warm water to allow the decals to release from the paper. They were then carefully slid into place on the control panel in the cockpit. I cemented the gun sight clear part into the slot at the top of the control panel. The pilot was then glued into his chair. The gun sight part was painted with humble 33 matte black, making sure I leave the reflector at the top, as in real life this would be clear. With that done, the cockpit assembly can now be glued into one half of the fuselage. I drop the propeller into place, and if you're careful with your glue, it should be able to rotate. The other fuselage half can then be glued over the top, sandwiching all the parts. I had to apply some pressure until the cement set. Here, I've painted the air intake part with the same 31 slate grey as before, and will now cement the radiator into place in those little slots. It was then added on the bottom of the nose of the plane. This smaller air intake was cemented to the side of the nose. Here, the horizontal tail surfaces are being glued into their slots on the tail. The rudder can then be glued on as well. The tail surfaces have these support struts that are glued into their holes. I broke the other one getting it off the sprue, but simply cemented it back together. The wing halves can now be joined together, and it's for steps like this I wish I had some thinner cement that would run into the gaps and hold everything together. I tried my best to run the glue around all the edges, but as you snap them together it tends to seep out and can make a mess if you're not careful. The wings can be joined to the fuselage, and it's starting to look like a plane now. The flaps come with the option of being lowered or raised. To raise them, you have to cut the two tabs off the side, but I thought I would cement them in the lowered position. The tabs slot into holes in the wings. The two underwing radiators are now glued into their slots. The smaller parts were then added onto the ailerons. I'm pretty sure these are movement limiters, which prevent the ailerons from travelling too far. The two cannon barrels in the wings can be glued into their holes in the leading edges. The engine exhausts were cemented into their slots on the nose of the model. Now it's time to start some painting. I used the black paint to cover the moulded representation of the engine on the nose. Again, a couple of coats would be needed to get an even finish. Humbrol 65 Aircraft Blue Matte Acrylic was painted onto the lower surfaces and the fuselage sides, as per the painting instructions. Again, a couple of layers would be needed, and I worked in opposite directions in each layer to try and avoid leaving brush strokes. With that paint now dry, 31 slate grey was used as the base colour on the upper surfaces. I repeated the application process, working in different directions for each layer of paint. I painted the fuselage completely freehand, taking my time to get the lines as straight as I can between the grey and the light blue. You'll notice that I've pushed the engine cowling into place so that I can paint it, but it can still be removed to see the engine. I carefully cemented the clear cockpit parts into place using the smallest amount of cement that I could. Too much and it will react with the plastic, causing it to fog up. You can position the canopy open or closed, but I thought it would look better in the closed position as if the pilot is ready to fly the aircraft. I added the aerial mast in the hole behind the cockpit, but again it had snapped getting it off the sprue. I made sure to glue the top part back on. 117 US light green matte acrylic was painted onto the model in the camouflage scheme as indicated on the box. I tried my best to get the lines as straight as I could. 
I carefully painted the cockpit frames using this same colour, but given the size of the brush it was quite difficult to do a neat job. 33 matte black was used to paint the cannons on the wings, the air intake and the engine exhaust on the nose. The landing gear legs, which I've already painted 31 slate grey, just like the wheel wells, can now be glued into their holes. The gear covers have been painted 31 on the inside and 65 on the outside. They were then cemented onto the legs using their little locating pins moulded onto them. The wheels can then be added onto the axles, having been painted 33 matte black on the tyres and 31 slate grey on the hubs. You have to take care to get the flattened edge of the wheel pointing down towards the ground as it simulates the weight of the aircraft when it's in position. With that done, now it's time to apply the decals. A much simpler process than in most of my builds, simply being soaked in warm water until they release from the backing paper and then slid into position. The decals are well printed and there aren't that many of them, so this is a fairly quick step. With some care, these are quite easy to get into the right places. I left the model overnight to completely dry and here it is, my finished Airfix Messerschmitt BF109E3 in 172nd scale. So, bearing in mind that I only use the stuff included in the kit, it's not that bad. It's not until you build a kit like this that you realise how much you take certain tools for granted though. Masking tape would have been a fantastic tool to get those straight lines between the various colours of paint. Thinning the paints would have resulted in far fewer brush strokes being visible. A sanding stick would have sorted out those various rough areas and a decal solution coupled with some layers of both gloss and then matte varnishes would have sorted out those areas where I had silvering. This model took some willpower to stop me from reaching for other colours of paint as well. A little silver or gunmetal here and there would certainly have made an improvement. And don't forget a better flesh colour than the ghostly grey of the pilot's face. Let's talk about the quality of the kit for a moment. Generally, the mould quality is quite good, with a fair level of details being reproduced. There was a little flash in places, which I had to cut away, and some of the parts were a little thin, which meant they broke as I cut them from the sprue. The different options for flaps, landing gear and an open or closed cockpit canopy are nice additions, as is the inclusion of a visible engine. It would make a perfect subject for a small diorama, perhaps undergoing maintenance. The instructions are quite clear and easy to follow, as are the painting and decal placement images on the rear of the box. Those ones being printed in colour certainly help. I did notice that the way the 65 aircraft blue is printed on the box is much more grey than blue though. Perhaps that's just a touch of artistic licence, or perhaps in real life it really was more of a grey colour, but this is the closest compromise that Airfits could make with the availability of paints in those tiny pots from Humbrol. I could imagine that it might cause a little confusion for those first timers building this kit, as it doesn't look exactly like the one on the box now, does it? The decals are rather nice and applied to the model quite well, even settling into some of the surface details despite the lack of setting solutions being used. There is some silvering of the decal film in places, but actually a lot less than I was expecting, which is a nice surprise. I would recommend this kit to someone who is just starting out due to its reasonably simple paint scheme, low number of decals and relatively good fit of the parts. This kit was bought last year as part of a special deal, being retailed for £5 from a discount supermarket here in the UK just before December. This is a good price for this kit. It normally retails for twice that, around the £10 mark. Personally, if I can get it at the cheaper price, then I will certainly try to. Other versions of this kit are available without paints and glue, coming with different and usually more complicated paint schemes. This kit was tooled back in 2012, so is only 8 years old or so. Airfix have designed a variety of different parts that can go with this kit, so that it doesn't just reproduce an E3 version, but also an E4 and E7. So if you have those or find them in the shop, it's virtually the same model. But I think it's probably time to wrap this one up. 
Despite having the use of some very questionable glue, a single paintbrush, which is not great for painting large areas or fine details, and four paints of a fair quality, I feel that I've managed to do a reasonable job on this kit. But what do you think of my finished model? Do you think I've done a good job given the nature of my challenge? And would you consider taking up this challenge for yourself? I hope this has given the beginners among you a little confidence and hope with your building skills. I guess we have answered the question and that yes, it is entirely possible to build a starter set model kit with only the paint, cement and brush that are included. Although you will at the very least need some water and a knife as well. At the end of the day, it would make for a brilliant basis for expanding your modelling skills. Before I sign off, honourable mention to my patrons and channel members. It's thanks to these guys that I can afford to continue to make videos like this. To find out how you can become one of the gang and join these guys here, take a look at the links in the description. If however you would like to support my channel for free, click that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you never miss a modelling video. And if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up too. You can connect with me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Discord. All that's left to say now is thanks for watching and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.